Hey everyone, so I wanted to quickly come with a short video about fertilizing your seedlings, fertilizing and watering. So as you can see, my seedlings are getting nice and big and each of them have more than the original leaves they started with. So these are the leaves they started with. These little ones here. There's two of them on each, one on each side. And then there are all these other leaves now. There's three more leaves on, on the seedling. It is time to fertilize. <clears throat> you don't want to use anything granular or any kind of dry fertilizer for, for your seedlings. You want to stick to a liquid fertilizer and you want to do it once a week. So um, some of these have gotten a few true leaves. These are called true leaves. All right. And they are in need of some fertilizer. So I have this jug here and this is basically a rabbit manure tea. And it's just rabbit manure and water. And I have put it in a jug and you let it sit for about three days or so. Shake it up every other day or every day. Just kind of shake it up a little. But um, this is going to be my fertilizer. Now, the place that I have my seedlings, I usually have to water them twice, maybe three times a week because it's a very warm area and they tend to dry out pretty quickly. So I had mentioned before, you're going to need to start fertilizing once a week. So for me, one of those waterings is going to need to be a liquid fertilizer. And you want to make sure that you're watering from the bottom. Once your seedlings emerge and they are no longer seeds, they're, now they're seedlings, you need to make sure that you're watering from the bottom. So if I'm watering my plants twice a week, then one of those waterings needs to be a fertilizer, a liquid fertilizer. You don't want to use anything granular or like dry fertilizers on seedlings. It's just not, you just don't want to do that. Make sure that you're using something liquid and watering from the bottom. So now that these seedlings have all gotten, most most of them have gotten true leaves, they are definitely going to benefit from a fertilization. And that's where the bunny brew comes in. So the bunny brew is basically a five to one ratio of water and rabbit manure. So you have five parts water, one part rabbit manure. And the easiest way to do that is in a five gallon bucket. You just get yourself a gallon of manure, dump it in the bucket, and then fill it up with water. Now, if you're gonna put the manure right in the bucket with the water, your manure, your bunny brew will be ready in about three days. Granted that you are stirring it daily. Now, if you want to, um, well, you're going to have to strain it, I should say. After it's ready and you need get ready to use it, you have to strain it. So if you don't want to have to go through the process of straining it, then you can make like a tea bag type of thing where you put the manure in like an old pillowcase or a cheesecloth or maybe a burlap bag. And then you put that in the bucket. But that's going to take longer and you're going to let that steep for about a week. And the best place to do that is is in the sun. So what I did with the gallon here, I used some hot water and I just put in um, a very small amount of the rabbit manure because these are seedlings and they don't need a ton of fertilizer. Um, you know, I'm just trying to use like a half strength type of thing. So I didn't need a lot and I did let it steep for about three days. So um, it these seedlings will get some definitely get some nutrients um, rabbit manure is one of the best manures you can use for your for your plants 
It increases poor soil by improving soil structure, drainage, moisture retention. It's packed with NPK, um, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, along with other like minerals and micronutrients and trace elements. It's just, I'm going to put everything in the description for you guys. So don't overlook the description. I will make sure that I include all of the NPK values and uh, whatnot. Um, rabbit manure definitely tops the list of manures and values because not only is it really high in the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, but it's a cold manure. So it's ready to use right from the rabbit hutch. It's not gonna burn your plants. It's not gonna harm your plants. It's actually like a slow release type of nutrition. And not only does it provide food and nourishment for your plants, but it also provides for your for the earthworms. And you definitely wanna attract earthworms to your garden. Um, so it's rich in many nutrients, definitely rich in many nutrients. Um, so once you're ready to use your tea, uh, the best way to do that is you're gonna have to dilute it. You want it to look like a pale yellow in color. So um, once it's done and steeping and whatnot, and if you strained it uh, or you know took your tea bag out, if you take your tea bag out, just kind of suspend it above the bucket and let it sit there until it stops dripping. Um, and then get you a cup of the tea and add that to a gallon of water, and then it should be fine. Um, and you can, you know, stretch it out that way, and you don't need any more than that. Um, fertilize once a week, and yeah, you should be good to go. Rabbits produce a lot of manure, okay? Like one doe and her offspring can produce over a ton of manure a year. Yes, a ton. So there is no shortage of manure when it comes to rabbits. But like I said, I will include a lot of information in the description for you guys. And you can take a look at that. And um, I just want to thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I hope you learned something. And if you guys need some rabbit manure, then just leave it in the description. And maybe we can work something out. But until next time, guys, the more you know, the more you grow. Bye, guys.